Welcome to Parks and Places Online. I'm Tom, and this is the third video on Everglades National Park. Be sure to check out the other two videos that I made on the Everglades if that's a park you're interested in going to. Today we share the sites along the main entrance route into the Everglades, all the way to Flamingo. Please take a moment to subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to get notifications when new videos are uploaded. The main entrance to the Everglades is less than 50 miles from the city of Miami. So if you're planning a vacation to Miami, be sure to include a day trip into the Everglades. Even before the entrance station to the park is a visitor center. Be sure to stop there to get maps and get the latest information about the park. Conditions change in the park all the time sometimes because they close off a section of the park because of nesting birds or because of flooding. Not far past the entrance station is the turnoff to the Royal Palms area of the park. Take it. This is the first must-see area in the park. There are two trails in the Royal Palm area. All right, today Darlene and I are in the Everglades in the southeast corner on the Anhinga Trail at the moment. It is a beautiful day in January. Probably yeah, about 73, 74. So perfect weather and uh, a little bit of a breeze, sunny. So perfect day. Perfect day to be out for a walk. The Anhinga Trail takes you along the marsh and on boardwalks over the marsh. There's a good chance of seeing alligators and many kinds of birds. We had an alligator on the pathway that people cautiously walked around. When we were there this past January, we saw several rare purple gallinule birds. The second trail that you pick up from the same parking lot is the Gumbo Limbo Trail, which is actually quite different as it goes through thick jungle of vegetation. Both of these trails are very short. Actually, all the trails that I'm going to be talking about today are very short. In the Royal Palms area is the turnoff to the Nike Missile Base. This is now a National Historic Site within the National Park. The Nike Hercules Missile Site, HM-69, was in operation from 1965 to 1979 and was part of the U.S. Air Defense slash Cold War deterrent. They have a restored Hercules missile on site, and they have other photos and historical items there on display. The Cuban Missile Crisis was a period in U.S. history when Soviet nuclear missiles were installed in Cuba, just over 300 miles south of Miami. The Nike missile base had three batteries of four missiles, so it had 12 nuclear missiles. In theory, these were SAM, or surface-to-air missiles, to shoot down incoming missiles from Cuba. I'm not sure how good the technology exists today to shoot down an incoming missile, but certainly there wasn't very much technology to shoot down a missile in 1965. So the strategy was to set off a nuclear explosion in the sky to take out the incoming missiles. This sounds like a very bad idea, but that was the best that we could come up with back in that day. We have real problems in our society today, but sometimes we forget just how bad things were not so many years ago. 
This area of the park is called the Hole in the Donut. I don't really know why. It used to be farmland that they are restoring to wetlands. They started this project in 1988. Of the 6,300 acres to restore, they only have 237 acres left, so they're almost done. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Upon these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets. Leaving the Royal Palm area, there are a few nice trails that we enjoyed. We like the Pehioki Overlook Trail, and we like the Nine Mile Pond Trail. All right, this is the Paheoki Trail. And we have like, it's a boardwalk. These are bald cypress that drop their leaves in winter. Not because it's cold, but because it's normally a drought. But as of this past January 2021, the trail at the Nine Mile Pond was still damaged from Hurricane Irma back in 2017. Dar, go a little bit further. No, I don't think so. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. As far as I can go. At least go to the end of the boardwalk. Very peaceful. Nine mile lake. <laughs> yes, there is a bathroom at Nine Mile Pond. The second must see site is Mrazic Pond. I don't really understand why this pond is so abundant in fish life, but it is. And this makes it very abundant with bird life that come to feast on the fish. This was the best example we've seen of white pelicans working together to corral the fish against the shore and then scooping them up. We spent a lot of time at Mrazic Pond and then stopped again on our way out. like they're leaving for the evening. The third and last must-see section of the park is Flamingo, which happens to also be at the end of the road. We saw a red-shouldered hawk at Echo Pond. We saw other rare birds along the shores and in the picnic area. But what makes Flamingo a must-see site is the chance to see two rare animals, manatee and American crocodiles. We saw a couple manatee playing in the dripping water at the fish cleaning station at the boat dock. That is just so weird to see them. Oh, well, there's two kissing. We saw two crocodiles at the boat launch. One was in the shallow waters and one was literally on the boat launch. Alligators are very common in Florida, 
but crocodiles only exist in the extreme southern tip of Florida. This is the only time we have ever seen crocodiles in the wild. There's his next meal. Tasty girl. If you're wondering what's the difference between an alligator and a crocodile, well, there's four main differences. Alligators are black and crocodiles are gray. Alligators have a wide, round snout and crocodiles have a long, narrow snout. With their mouth closed, alligators' teeth are all showing pointed down, where crocodile teeth show pointing up and down. But the easiest way to tell an alligator and a crocodile apart is that an alligator you will see later, and a crocodile you'll see after a while. Sorry, I had to throw in an old joke. It is 38 miles from the park entrance to Flamingo. We did all these sites in one long day. We weren't camping, but we were actually staying at a hotel in Homestead. We got up early in the morning, and then we got into the park. We stayed in the park until sunset, and then made our way back to the hotel. If you don't have as much time to see all three must-see sites within the park, then I suggest going to the Royal Palms area. It's right by the entrance and it has a good representation of the sites in the park. I hope this gives you enough information to plan your trip to Everglades National Park. If you've already been there, then let me know in the comments below what was your favorite part of the park. Thanks for watching.